Hey everyone, thanks for coming. And I appreciate um, you all coming here. And I'm clearly not Jonathan, so I apologize for that. But uh, I'm glad that I could fill in in his stead. So today we're going to be talking about extending WordPress with, with slot fill. It's something that I am super passionate about and I enjoy it. And I talk about it whenever people will let me. So before I do, just introduce myself real quickly. My name is Ryan Welcher. I'm a developer advocate sponsored by Automatic, where, as my bio said, I work to remove barriers of adoption for WordPress and Gutenberg. I've been a developer for since about 2004, and I've used WordPress since about 2009, give or take. I'm a regular contributor to the Gutenberg project and to WordPress. So, so what is slot fill? At a super high level, slot fill is an extension paradigm that allows developers to add elements to existing UIs in WordPress. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it does so by allowing us to register plugins containing content, or what we're calling fills, to be displayed in a specific location uh, or slot somewhere in a UI. Um, items are rendered outside of their element tree, and so this is very similar to React Portals. If you don't know what React Portals is, it doesn't matter, but this is just sort of, it's a similarity. Um, currently, there are 12 locations or slots available. Um, a couple of them are experimental, so I probably shouldn't show you, but I'm going to show you them anyways. And, uh, well, yeah. And slots are location-based. Uh, so while they differ in implementation, they can be sort of philosophically compared to the uh, actions from the Hooks API, uh, in that they are they're, they're source order dependent, so they're rendered in the order that you register them, and they're obviously register, or sorry, rendered in a very specific location. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's look at a, a very simple basic slot fill system. So it consists of three components. The first component is called the slot component. And wherever this component is rendered, any fills that are associated with this uh, component will have their content rendered in the slot lo location. Um, the component sets three props. We have the name prop, which is the name of the slot, a fill props object, which is an object of properties that any fills that are, are targeting this slot will have access to. And then we have a bubbles virtually. It's a Boolean that basically changes the event bubbling behavior. Um, yeah. Uh, so this is what a very basic slot would look like. Uh, it's imported from the WordPress components package, and then there's all the props I just talked about. Uh, the fill component is the next part. So this component is used to provide content to a slot. Uh, the, this component can be rendered anywhere inside the UI, even in a completely different or like element tree in React, which is what makes this so, so sort of powerful. Um, it accepts a single prop, and that's name, and that's the name of the slot that this fill targets. This is all going to make a lot more sense in a minute, I swear. <clears throat> and so the last piece, oh, sorry, here's, a, here's an example of uh, what that code would, would look like. So the last piece of the puzzle is the slot fill provider component. This is the magical glue that connects fills and slots. Basically, it wraps the UI, and its job is to detect any slots and any fills somewhere in its child, or sorry, inside of it or any of its child components, and then move the fill content to the slot location. Um, uh, yeah, and it has no props. So a basic slot fill system kind of works like this. An application or a component is wrapped inside a slot fill provider. A, a name slot is rendered somewhere in there, inside the application. A fill with the same name is rendered somewhere else. And then that fill content is rendered in the associated slot location. So here's a, oh, and here's kind of like a code representation of what that looks like. Um, it's, uh, so does this thing work? Does my little point work? We've got the slot fill provider up here, followed by the, my awesome app that I've built. And then inside, I'm, I'm rendering a slot and then later on a fill. And then when that would render, the contents would render in the slot location. This is sort of like another graphical representation. Again, we're wrapping our. UI inside of a slot fill pro provider, we're exposing a named slot on the right-hand side and on the left-hand sorry left-hand side on the right-hand side, we're um, uh, exposing to or sorry we're adding two fills, and then the slot fill provider would would take over and move the fill uh, contents into the slot location in the order in which they've been registered. So, <laughs> how does WordPress do it? So everything that, that we've seen and talked about so far is kind of a closed system. All the JavaScript we have access to, we have to build this. This is React, so we need to build, process, all that sort of stuff. Well, as extenders and developers of, of WordPress, how do we get access to this? Because we can't just rebuild the block editor every single time we want to add code to it. So the way that we extend it is um, by using these two new pieces that are introduced by WordPress. The first is a, is a function called, reg called register plugin. And its job is to provide the entry point to the system. And then it, it accesses this sort of like global list of array, this array of registered plugins. And the second piece 
is another component called the plugin area component. And its job is to reach into that list of registered plugins and then render them in, in, internally. And, it, and, and then that's how that works. So let's look at the register plugin function. It's part of the uh, WordPress plugins package. It has two parameters. The first is a name, and it has to be, it's a string and it's a name, and it has to be a unique name among all plugins that have been registered. And the second one is a settings object, which has three properties. The first property, render, is the only one that's, that's required, and that's going to refer to a component that will be rendered. And inside of that component, we can have one or more fills. There's icon, which is optional, and it's used to define a visual asset to be associated with this plugin. Some fills will um, inherit an, an icon from your register plugin call, others won't. And then the third is scope, and it's only there for completion sake because we don't use it for anything right now. Um, and in fact, you shouldn't use it. You should never define scope unless you're doing something custom with the plugin area, and I'll talk about that in a second because your, your plugins won't show up. So, oh, and this is a simple example of register plugin. <clears throat> so the plugin area component is sort of the last piece of the puzzle. And like I said, it, it, it renders all the register plugins inside a hidden div, and then it has two props. It has scope, like we just talked about. Um, and uh, any, if you define a scope for a plugin area, then your register plugin calls have to also uh, define that same scope. And then there's an on error function that just handles errors. And so this would be what that looks like. So the WordPress slot fill system is a little bit more complicated, so you just have to bear with me and just trust me that this is kind of how it works. <laughs> but uh, so a slot fill provider wraps the editor provider component. The editor provider component is like a component that gives us a block editor. Inside of it, we've got a layout component where a bunch of slots are exposed. Fills are registered using the plugins API, and then fills are rendered in the hidden div by the plugin area component, and then fill content is rendered in the appropriate place. Uh, this is sort of a pseudo code for how that all looks and feels. And then um, this is a bit of a graphical thing again. So we have our register plugin that adds to the list the plugin area down in the, in the bottom right, um, renders those fills, and then the slot fill provider will take over and render the content in the appropriate slot wherever that is. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, so far, so far, everything we've seen has been the basic slot the very basic components. So that's not how the slot fills are actually made. They're actually uh, not just simple components, they're named components that usually contain other functionality and have inner components. In this example, um, you can see how the plugin post status info slot fill is structured. And if you notice that the slot is exposed with the fill itself, and that's where we get the name slot fill. I'm, I'm making that up, I'm assuming that's where we get the name slot fill. Um, yeah. So once that's been um, built, now we can then ex expose this somewhere in, in, inside of the UI. So this is actually the, what the post, um, in this simplified example of the, the plugin post status info slot is exposed inside the post status component. Now this component is, is where, the, where you see all the stuff about your post. Now I've truncated a bunch of the stuff in there uh, because there's, it wouldn't fit on a slide. So, uh, but just take my word for it that that's how it works. And then, uh, so when we register a fill, we can then import the plugin post status slot fill from the edit post package, and then wrap whatever we want to appear inside that, that slot um, in the plugin post status info. And once that renders, it would look a little something like that. I've, oh, I should probably leave these, if you want me to leave the slides up a little longer with, with the code for pictures or whatever, just let me know. I'm happy to do that. Um, cool. So currently, there are, like I said, there are 12 slots available. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to go through them all. And uh, so we've already seen the plugin post status in info one in the last slide. So the next one I'll, I'll, I'll talk about is the plugin pre-publish panel. So this one adds a panel to the pre-publish sidebar that, that you get when you hit publish the first time. Um, it takes three props. We have an optional class name. We have a title. The title is what will appear in that panel. If you leave the title off, it, the the header will not display. And then there's an, an initial open flag that will tell you whether or not the, um, the panel itself is open. And if there's no title provided, it's always open. So the code to render that would look like this. We're just pulling in the appropriate slot fill up here for the pre the plugin pre-publish panel. I'm going to get sick of saying that by the end of this, for sure. Uh, and then we're just wrapping our, our, our content in here. And then when that renders, it looks like this with my little avocado down there at the bottom. Um, the next one is plugin post publish panel. So this is ex almost exactly the same. It just happens after you've you've published in that sort of like, hey, yay, you published post is live screen. So you can add it there. Um, the the props are all the same. Again, we have class name, we have title, and we have a, 
initial open. The code for that looks a bit like this. Um, the only difference between this and the last code slide is the name of the, uh, the um, slot fill. And so that's pretty common when you're working with slot fill because it's so, because it's so location based, you might, I mean, it's exactly the same code under the hood, it's just in a different spot. So it's a bit of a lot of sort of, re, of re, repeating things. Um, yeah, and then so when that renders it, it would look like this. That's my custom panel with the avocado down there. The avocado is a running theme for this. This is developer advocate, I don't know, whatever. Uh, next one is plugin more menu item. This renders a menu item in the plugins group in the more menu drop down, which is a, a real hard thing to say, but it's in that three button drop down, and um, and it can be used as a button or a link depending on on the props passed. So it, it accepts the h an href prop, and when this is used, it's used as an anchor instead of a button. It supports an icon. Um, it supports an on click, which is just a function that will be run when you click on it. And then the uh, bottom one there, it will take any additional props that you've passed to it, and it will actually trickle them through to the underlying component on underneath. That's why I have this sort of spread operator there. <clears throat> so an example here would be, I'm gonna add an item that, that links out to the uh, slot fill reference guide on the block editor handbook, and I'm adding target and, and rel, and those are not props that this slot fill supports, so those will be um, trickled down into the, the button, basically the button on, underneath, and then we add some text there, and then when that renders, it looks like that. And if you click on that, it'll take you out to the right place. Next one is plugin block settings menu item. These names are fun, so <laughs> you just have to get used to them. Um, it adds a new item in the block settings menu on any allowed block. So this is how you would add something to a specific block in their menu. So it, um, it takes four props. The allowed blocks prop is an array of blocks that this will appear on. If you don't add this, it'll appear across all blocks. There is some logic around selecting multiple blocks and, uh, and whether or not it it, it, uh, it it displays, I believe, if, if you have three blocks selected and one of them is not in the allowed block list, then this will, will not show up. Um, that's kind of an edge case. Um, then we have, we have icon, we have the label that, that will appear, and then we have the on, the on click again. So this is an example of that. We have the allowed blocks. This is going to add a, add a button to the paragraph block with a very long label, and then when you click on it, it will alert clicked. So the most useless code example I could possibly come up with. Um, and so that's what it looks like. So I've clicked this, this button or here, and this shows up down here. And if I click that, it will alert. Uh, plugin sidebar. I'm sure everyone in the room has seen this. If they're, if they're not sure what it is, you've definitely seen it before. Uh, this renders a sidebar when activated. In, in the right hand, top right-hand corner by the Publish buttons, that, that's where, where you would see this. Um, it, the contents of this fill will show up inside of the uh, sort of sidebar that's, that's open when you click the button. So this needs a name, which is an, an identifier for this sidebar. Um, we have a class name. We have a title that's, that's displayed at the top of the sidebar. We have an is, is pinnable Boolean that will say whether or not you can actually pin it in, in, in the top there. And we have an icon. So the code looks like this. Uh, I'm giving it a name, a title, and my avocado I, icon again, and then a little bit of content. And then when that when that re uh, renders, it, it, it looks like this. So this is something that I'm sure everyone has seen before. There's tons of plugins. This, I think this was, this was one of the first slots that, that was available. So many, many, many plugins. I think Yoast was one of the first ones to really use it. Um, so yeah. Um, there's plugin, sidebar, more menu item. This one is, is I think it's a bit old um, because this only works with, with the slot field that I just showed you with the plugin sidebar. So if you don't and you get one when you register the plugin sidebar. What this does is this adds a button to the more menu uh, a drop down that opens up a sidebar. That's really what it does. So the the two um, uh, props, it's the target, which is the name of the sidebar of the plugin sidebar that you want to open, and then uh, again an icon. So in this example, I'm doing both. I'm adding the plugin sidebar down, down here and giving it a name, and then this is adding the the button that will target the same name. And then that shows up here. So if I click this, this sidebar will expand. Yeah. OK. Document setting panel. This is my personal favorite <laughs> of all the slot fills. I guess this is my favorite. It's a weird thing to be, have favorites for, I guess. <laughs> Renders items below the status and ability panel in the document sidebar. So it, um, this takes a name, a class name, a title that will be displayed, and then again, an icon. Um, the uh, code looks like this. Everything we're doing always in imports from the edit post. I, I, I should mention, and I didn't earlier, but I should mention this, that 
the slots appear in the package where you find them. So in this case, we're, we're looking at everything in edit post, so that's where all of these slots are exported from in the package. Um, yeah, so when this is rendered, it looks like this. And we have a little component there. So this is the, the experimental one that I'm going to show you. Um, it's in the block editor handbook, so it's, no, it's not a secret or anything. But um, I will say, please use this with, with caution. It's experimental. Experimental things can change and break all, all, all the things. Um, but this allows replacing the, uh, the dashboard uh, button to go back uh, out of full screen. It has no, no props. The code looks like this. So you can see we're importing the experimental dashboard stuff and, uh, and aliasing it and then rendering this out. And when, the, when the, sorry, we're adding this full screen closed mode, full screen mode closed button or component. And then when that renders, it looks like this. So I've replaced the WordPress logo with an avocado. And use with caution. Please just use with caution. Uh, cool. So there's currently three slots available in the site editor. I'm not going to put you through going through all of them because they're exactly the same. The only thing you have to do is pull them out of the edit site package instead of the edit post package. Um, yeah. So that's it. More. We need more slots. We don't have enough slots. Well, we can get more slots if you help us get more slots. So if you have <laughs> any use case for a new slot in any lo location, I'd highly highly recommend and encourage you to go to that link, create an issue, and, and, and talk about it. Because these are the extension points that every developer uses and every, every developer needs. And we've only got 12. And compare that with what we used to have back in the classic editor experience when the, you know, something like 8.6 million. Um, yeah. So OK, now I want to talk about some fun things that you can do with, with slots. Wow, I'm really, uh, I'm really motoring here. I'll have to slow down a little bit. Um, yeah, cool. So we're going to create our own slot fills. So there is a function that will help you do that. You can use this function called create slot fill. And it, it, it takes a, a, um, a parameter of a string. And basically, what that's going to do is return to you a fill um, component and a slot component with matching name uh, property. So it's just, it's just a helper function. So a basic slot fill example would look a bit like this. We're going to import our uh, create slot fill. We're going to create a slot and a fill with a particular uh, name. And then we create a new component called uh, basic create slot fill. So the best, OK, the best practice here, that, that was totally planned. The best practice here is uh, to name the component the same as what you're naming it up here. It's just the way that it is. There's no rhyme or reason to it. That's just what's, what's being done. And then um, it's going to get its children. And then we're going to wrap the children inside of the fill component. And then we just add a dot slot property to our component and add the slot component to it. And then we export it. And that's really all, all you have to do. Uh, oh, sorry. I guess I should have probably gone through it that way. <laughs> and yeah, so for the next bunch of slides, just assume I have a settings screen that is going to be rendered. So this is how we expose the, the slot. So we've created our slot. We're importing it. Now we're exposing it inside of our settings screen. And then we're going to register a plugin, um, which is going to use that custom slot that we've made. And it's going to wrap this, um, this, this string, which I don't know why I have it in back text. There's nothing in there, but anyways. And then when that renders, it'll look like this. So this is my setting screen. This is a panel, right? So uh, what if we have fill props? So fill props are, can be uh, any slot can use them. And they can be pretty powerful. So if you like, you know, this isn't much of an example, but what if you say, how, you know, if you're localizing some data that was like the user data and you want to say, hello, user, and then you wanted all of your, your, your fills to, to reference that. It's, maybe that's a bad example, but that's the one I'm going with. And then, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the same slot fill, or the slot, and then add some fill props. And then in our, in our um, inside of our register plugin call, we're going to create this function because this the props get passed to the, the contents of this. So you get a function that has props, and then you can say props dot message. And when that renders, it'll look like this: hello my or message, hello slots. Um, you can customize the fill structure. So with this particular one, the fills are all going to be wrapped in a button. Um, and uh, yeah, and so again, this is my settings screen. This is all very much the same. It's just the name of the slot that's uh, changing. Um, and then when we register our plugin, we can use multiple instances of, of the slot fill to create multiple buttons. So in, in here, I have three buttons. And then when this renders, it's going to render me three buttons. So this, is, this can be very powerful if you want to control um, 
what goes in a slot fill. Like for example, the document setting panel one, it's wrapped inside of a panel and a panel body. So you just put the content in, you don't have to worry about it styling it properly and getting the appropriate components in there. Uh, custom slot structure, so we can we can customize the, the slot. So the slot will wrap all of the fills. And so in this case, I, I'm, I'm um, what I'm doing here is, again, we're getting all the fills passed to our function and we're just checking the length that's there. We're gonna wrap all the fills in a code block and then otherwise just return null so it doesn't return anything. And then when I use it, I just expose the slot as normal. And then this will be rendered inside of a code tag. And then when it renders, it's rendered inside of a code tag. So um, yeah. Uh, so we can customize both slot and fill. This is a really trivial example, but in our fill, we're wrapping everything in an LI and in our slot, we're, we're, we're wrapping it in a UL. So we're building out a un unordered list, which is <laughs> kind of silly again, but you can see how combining these would could be very very powerful if you're building out a very that you need to deal with. Oh. Oh, my mic. Hello, check. Here we go. Um, yeah, and so okay, so we're, we're exposing our slot again, and then um, we're using the uh, custom slot fill to create these list items, and then when it renders, it renders like a list. So yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So this is a fun one that I did. This is a slot fill outside of the editor. And so what I, what I, I did this a little while ago, um, and it was, it's, a, it's a dashboard widget that uses slot fill. And so we're gonna, I'm just, just gonna take you through it. So the first thing that we do is we're just gonna register a, a dashboard widget the way that we normally would. Here, the only th out th thing I, I'm outputting is just a div with an ID that I, I can target uh, with React. Um, then I create a custom slot fill. Again, it's a very simple one. Um, some extraneous markup in there apparently. And then, uh, uh, yeah, so when that's done, then I add the slot fill system to the widget, and I do that by creating my dashboard widget. So you see I'm taking the slot fill provider and wrapping the whole thing. I'm adding a little bit of markup in here. It's just a title, and then I'm exposing, exposing the slot, and then I'm creating a, a custom plugin area with the scope of dashboard. This can be rendered anywhere. You, you don't see it. It can be rendered at the top of the app, the bottom of the app, as long as it's inside slot provider, it doesn't matter. And then just down here, I'm, I, I'm using um, React to render this to the dashboard widget. So I should note though, I'm, I'm only using WordPress packages. The WordPress slash element package is a wrapper for React. So I pulled render from that package. I'm not using like a different version of React or anything. This is all straight out of WordPress. And then <clears throat> once that's in place, I, I can register a plugin. And then I uh, am, am scoping it to my custom one. And uh, this is my This is, that's my favorite GIF on, on the internet. It starts out with like, oh, what are you showing me? And then it becomes, okay, uh, cool. Uh, okay, and so at the end of all this, if you, there may not be a slot available for you. You may not be able to extend the thing that you want to extend. So what you could try is you could try actual React portals. And I, I wanted to show this code by George uh, Mamadashvili, who I think he's sponsored by GoDaddy, and he is super duper smart, and he, he okayed me to use this. He's Mamaduka all over the place. But this is an example of using React Portal to add that little smiley button into the editor. So it's super, super cool. I just wanted to, sh to share that. And uh, oh, if you want to steal all the code or any of the code from this, anything you, you've seen is in my repo. So that's the link, and that's a QR code to get there. Um, feel free, grab it and and review it and tell me how horrible I am at, at writing code. So I'll, I'll leave that up for a couple of minutes, or a couple of seconds, I should say. Just gonna go grab a drink of water, looks like. All right, everyone got it, we're good? If it doesn't work for you, come get me and I'll just, I'll email you the link or something or snail mail it to you. I don't know, I'll figure something out to get it to you. Cool, and so that's it for me. So um, thank you. And if you're looking to find me, you can find me as Ryan Welcher Codes on Twitch, YouTube, and Discord. I'm at Ryan Welcher on the Twitters and in most Slack channels as Welcher, Ryan Welcher, Welcher Ryan, variations of my two names. Um, yeah, so any questions? Happy to try to answer them. Um, in slot fills, the example I actually made a couple of fills, and I was interested on your thoughts in ordering them because if they return null, yeah, they move to the bottom next time they re return something. 
So do you have any thoughts on ordering? I do. I have, I have, I have a lot of thoughts on ordering. Um, I have a PR that actually orders them um, that I started a couple years ago <laughs> that I would love to get in place. It's uh, um, because I don't, I think source order personally is an atrocious way to handle uh, controlling how your code runs, right? It, it's like back in the day of like procedural, like I, I used to write a lot of flash code. I don't know if anybody else wrote flash code, but it was like you write that the stuff at the top of the page ran before the stuff at the bottom of the page. And that's, that's just not, a, not, a, not an efficient way of doing it. So there are some discussions around it because I, the, yeah, so, so that doesn't an, answer your question, but I feel strongly about being able to order them. Um, yeah, unfortunately. So, <laughs> anyone else? Oh, cool. Yes, it's it is it is, and it's it's it wasn't. I didn't get any pushback on the concept of it. It was more around the implementation of it, and I think it was just more of a question of like, well, sh we should give users the ability to to manage the order before developers can. You know what I mean? So like, if you read, well, it's it's sort of like being able to like. So let's use the example of the. Um, of the document setting sidebar, right? So we've got stat we've got all those panels, and, and you can't order them. In the classic experience, you could set that order based on user preferences. So I understand that's maybe where we want to go with it, um, but I have to I gotta light a fire under somebody, probably me. So anyway, sorry, Adam, go ahead. Okay, cool. So um, just a couple questions. I'm gonna combine them all into one. Yeah. So the first part, the the last thing you showed, the portal uh, mm -hmm. implementation. Does that mean that uh, like we can literally put slot fills anywhere we want in the editor? Well, not slot around? fills. Specifically, not slot fills. Right, but portals. You can technically, if you can figure out the way of getting it, like finding the right classes and all that stuff, and making sure that it, class actually exists and all that. Yeah, it's it it is technically possible. I think there's a there's a certain plugin by Google who might know about this that did that with something, uh, an AMP, AMP plugin? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it is possible. It's going to be a hack, but much like the way uh, you know, actions and hooks were kind of in the classic experience of enough people hack it in a certain way, we usually end up with a hook for it. So mm -hmm. maybe, that's, maybe that's one approach to getting things in, kind of a gorilla approach. Anyways, you should give so, more. So the other question is about um, removing things from the editor. So currently, uh, it's easy to add things in slots, but there's really no way other than like CSS hiding to remove elements. Um, Ye well, yes and no. There is, but you have to know the name. You have to know some things about it. So my question, though, is do you think there's an approach where we could be registering core elements with slots, and, and then you could just unregister them the yeah. way that we'd hook things in in core? I, I think so. Like, there are, there are internal slots used, as you probably know. So like if you're building uh, blocks, if, it, if you've ever used inspector controls or advanced inspector con controls inside of your blocks, that's actually a slot fill. So there's a bunch of internal slot fills that are being used. but you can you can unregister a plugin, for example, but you unregister everything to do with that plugin. You can't. There's no way to like. So let's say that you have a plugin and you register four things and you want to get rid of the third yeah. thing. Can't do it. You can't. You can't get access to it in that regards. You you can get a list of registered plugins and you can you can unregister the plugin that you want to get rid of, but it gets rid of everything. It's a, it's kind of a sledgehammer approach to what Not you're trying to do. Not on a per slot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can't do that, unfortunately. Thank you very much for this. There was one um, piece of code at the, the beginning, and it shows up throughout your little avocado in the slides mm, around yeah. the custom icon. And yeah. that's something where I've been a little stymied in the past by the documentation around how to get a custom icon. Mm -hmm. Is that something that, like, is that a sort of a known documentation deficiency, or am I just looking in the wrong place? Um, that's a good question. I think, in the sense of what I was doing with the custom SVG, it's probably a bit of a known, it's probably a bit of a documentation issue. It will work. Um, the way that I did it, and I, I can show you the code, is I, I, there's this awesome tool online where I took an actual image and dropped it in and turned it into a React component. So I'm actually rendering it in that way. I'm not, it's not a true SVG where I have to like get it into Webpack and all, all that stuff. Or it's not, it is a true SVG, but it's not that. So yeah, it's, I think it's a bit of a documentation thing. Hi there, thanks for this. Um, no I'm not a developer, so I hope this question is relevant. But if we get out. were just, adding... Just get out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, if we, if, so if we're adding additional uh, options within the editor for some kind of control, are the options available through the WordPress API if we have a headless site on the front end? 
through slot fill? Yes. Uh, no, because this is strictly for the UI of Gutenberg. So, it, yeah, there's no there's no data layer available for what we're what we're talking about here, as far as I know. I don't believe there is. I mean, there is for blocks. You can get stuff for blocks. You can get stuff for many things, but no, no, this is strictly for the UI. Yeah. Now, if, if for example, your slot fill introduced a means to, say, add a, a custom post type, you could get the data from that, but you can't, couldn't get the actual slot, um, and it wouldn't, be a, it wouldn't be any good unless you were, like, it wouldn't be any, any good to you. You can get the list of all the registered plugins, but unless you're doing this with it, it's not much use to you. It's a good question, though. It's a great question. Hi, with uh, the UI modification, can you modify what you store in the blocks per se? Not what you store, but you could. So there are slots, like I said, there are slot fills available in uh, it, um, in the block API, like inspector controls, events inspector controls, things like that. If you can add, you can add your own to your own custom blocks and let, have people use that. And then, but it, Unless it's setting attributes for, for your block or doing some other side effect like setting meta or whatever it is, it won't really affect the block itself. It's, it's quite literally just used for UI elements inside the block editor or the site editor or whatever editor you're, you're in that actually has uh, slot fills enabled. So. Any other questions? All right, let's hear it for Ryan. Thank you. Thank you.